Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhaus here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 to 4. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call 267-988-2000. We also have a special guest with us today, Tom Robinson of Robinson Insurance. And we're going to teach you a little bit about the things that real estate investors need to know about insurance. When you're done listening to our 15-minute segment on insurance, you're really going to have some knowledge that you didn't possess prior to this show. So who is addicted to real estate? We buy houses. If you have one you're looking to sell, give us a call. Our phone number is 267-988-2000. That's an easy one to remember. right? We're also a real estate agency. If you're an agent or a realtor in the Philadelphia area and you wish you were an investor or you got into the business because you wanted to be an investor, then addicted to real estate is the place for you. We have three offices, one in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. We also have investor and realtor education meetings every month. And this month, we even got a website set up for our education events, and it's called phillyseminars.com. Seminar, singular. phillyseminar.com. Check it out. I haven't even checked it out. I just got informed about 10 seconds ago that this website exists. You can also check us out at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. Addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address in on that website, and I will send you invitations to all of our local meetings in Philadelphia. And that's definitely a list you want to be on if you want to keep in the loop with Addicted to Real Estate. So how are you crazy guys doing today? At least you refer to us as crazy. That's smart. I like that. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to be more accurate. That's all. <laughs> Are we crazy real estate investors, or are we just crazy people? We're just different kinds of guys. We're outside-the-box kind of guys. Jeremy's not crazy. Are you, Jeremy? Jeremy? I'm like concerned that Jeremy's <laughs> probably on. the craziest of us all. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'll let everybody else be the decider on that. I can't. How about Brett? How are you doing mind. over there today? Macaroni. Brett? Macaroni. I'm good, guys. How are you guys? I don't know what this nickname Macaroni what'd you came do from. This, but... What'd you do this weekend? Anything good? Uh, kept myself busy. Checked out my friend who just bought a house. It looked good. What? Well, wait, I mean, wait, 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 wait. He bought a house. And you yeah, but us? he didn't buy it from you guys, though. It's a real shame. Dude, you don't make real estate moves without talking to us. <laughs> That's true. That's what I told them. Man. Dude, how about uh, dates? Do you have any hot dates? Uh, I did on Monday, and I have another one on Wednesday. All right. If you want to share any pictures, my email address is phil at addicted to real estate dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely wait, will. I wait. might be in those pictures, too. Yeah, but if you, if, you see, if you see what this guy looks like, you'll understand why we call him macaroni, number one. And number two, you don't want to see those pictures. I don't know what if you saw those pictures and you call him macaroni. I don't want to relate this to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there's a meatball joke in there somewhere, but I'm going to leave know. it alone. <laughs> why do you call him macaroni? He's not even, are you Italian? No, not at all. It's just some kind of macaroni joke I made earlier. I, I knew there was something about you I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jeremy, what uh, what are we going to be talking about today? So today's questions for the day. When do you think the next real estate crash will be? Hmm. Bring out our crystal balls for that one, huh? <laughs> no, I got an answer to that one. I'm losing my house to foreclosure. How can how can you help? Uh, I get this a lot of times. We get calls to the office. Oh, yeah. People say that and divorce, foreclosure, all sorts of scenarios. So. And I want to sell my house, and the realtor said I should redo my kitchen first. What would you guys do? I get that question a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So our main to- topic, we're going to talk with Tom Robinson about insurance needs. Uh, a lot of a lot of things you don't know about insurance that uh, we're going to cover for real estate investors, landlords, flippers, and all that. So we'll talk about that. And um, we also have an exciting exciting meeting. We have a seminar coming up May 21st. And it's going to be in the Northeast Philly area. We've got multiple times for it. If you want to check it out, you can go to phillyseminar.com or you can call our phone number to register, 215-525-6801, 215-525-6801. And with that, guys, we'll be right back. 
Right. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the Internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We're going to go over our questions now. we got some great questions in this week. And Jeremy Ricci is our resident genius. And we like to have him answer the questions and then try to make fun of his answers. So let's see what he comes up with. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, what's the first question? When do you think the next real estate crash will be? I thought it was a question answerer, not the question asker. I don't know. I could be both. You are the question asker. Okay. So the next real estate crash, you know, the last crash had to, a lot to do with the loosey-goosey lending procedures, I would say. And um, the next one, I, you know, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but I think that um, there probably will be some telltale signs. We can learn a little bit from the last one. And when they start doing, um, you know, ninja loans, ninja loans is no income, no job <laughs> loans, right? I don't know what the A stands for, but. No income, no job. Uh, but anyway, when they do start doing those kind of loans. Then we'll be able to get loans again. Yeah, then we'll be able to get loans no again. Income, we but, then no we'll know, but then we'll know to sell, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Phil often says, you know, when the when, 
when the shoe shine guy starts to give uh, stock advice, yeah. that's when you sell your stock. But you know, you will you will see a ton of people coming into the fix and flip business that have never done it before. That um, you know, I mean, I, I think there's a similar thing. What do you think the equivalent of the shoe shine guy in real estate would be? Your well, brother-in-law giving I real think, estate advice. <laughs> I think there are a million indicators. You just got to be looking for them. Right now, I, I always tell people, um, you know, 2025. All right, because let's face it, that'll be that'll be a solid. You know, it's already been a solid 10 years since the last crash, right? I mean, some people well, say... 2008. I, I don't think it was 2008. I actually will tell you that it started... I, I, If you read the book, Addicted to Real Estate, I identified Labor Day weekend, 06? 2006. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you think I'm lying... I mean, there's there's solid reason for thinking that that labor. I could tell you this. I can't tell you what year it's going to crash, but it's going to start on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> now, okay, think about it as in real estate terms. Okay, usually people there's a buying spree in spring, and there's still a pretty strong buying spree in the summertime. Labor Day weekend, uh, families, moms and dads, they all get back to getting the kids to school and all that kind of stuff. Everybody gets back to their regular grind. And the real estate market usually takes a huge drop off. So if it's going to start to crash, it starts after Labor Day weekend. Uh, if if we made it all the way to 2025 without a problem, that would be almost a 20 year run. Yeah, 2025 sounds high to me. You think it's too long? I, yeah, I think 2021 is, is more likely number. And frankly, you know, being conservative, 2021 will be a good number for me. It's usually seven to ten year cycles, I agree. but we also have, you know. People have a, a short-term memory when it comes to the market being bad. Oh, so you'll, absolutely. You'll see, yeah. you know, the builders are starting to build right now. And when when you see that new construction inventory sitting there not selling, I think that's the time. And and I, I know that, you know, a lot of the mistakes that people made were that they bought flip, fix and flip properties that were too expensive that they only had that one exit strategy to sell it. They weren't buying first-time homebuyer stuff where at least if you can't sell it, you could put a tenant in there and get your mortgage covered. Um, so I would caution people that as you see the market going really hot, maybe try to stick, you know, steer clear of those high-end flips. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a couple of things I would tell you. If you're into timing and you want to try to time the market, first of all, there's a tremendous book out there called Timing the Real Estate Market by Robert Campbell. And uh, you should read about it because Robert Campbell lost uh, millions of dollars not in the crash of 2006 period. He lost it in the crash of like uh, 1995, okay, or 1991 is when he lost his money. And then he wrote this book later on as he as he saw all the indicators for the next crash to come. And he wrote the book like in 2004. It's a great book because he's predicting in the book what's going to happen and what he predicts exactly what happens. But the beautiful thing about the book is that he gives you all of the criteria you need to figure out anything you want to figure out. And it's an easy book to read. And I'm into cycles. I'm interested in that. Timing the real estate market is critical, okay? And uh, if you read Addicted to Real Estate, I talk about it constantly, and I think about it a lot right now because I think now is the time you want to start paying attention to that. I just signed up for this website that gives you a real estate chart of the day. Now, I've only seen a couple of them, and I'm not that impressed with what I'm seeing, but I want to start doing that. I want to start coming up with calculations and formulas. But here's the easiest thing to do. Do the opposite of whatever the crowd is doing. So when everyone you know is buying investment properties and real estate investor meetings are are blowing out the doors with the number of people showing up and real estate offices or every realtor in the world is making money and they got agents galore, that's the time to start doing the opposite. Absolutely. Maybe that's something to look at because, you know, a lot of real estate agents hung up their license and they stopped doing the business after yeah, the market crashed. Back, sure. But if we could, you know, we have good friends that have uh, real estate schools. We can look at the attendance of the schools. And when that starts spiking, you know, quite a bit, either he's doing a great job of marketing or, yeah. or, uh, <laughs> or, you know, or just every Tom, Dick, and Harry is getting the real estate license. Well, there's uh, there's something else I wanted to point out. I mean, that the movie The Big Short, if you're into real estate cycles, you've awesome got to watch that movie, yeah, okay? Movie. That's an amazing movie that predicts, in my opinion, very accurately what happened. And it's essentially just greed. It's all about greed and how greed just overwhelmed people. And they, they kept buying, thinking that the trees are going to grow to the sky. And trees don't grow to the sky. hate to tell you that. Okay, so let me just tell you, at the end of the movie... Uh, it talks all about the greed and the, and the vehicles for which these uh, Wall Street guys use the real estate market 
as a method to get rich. And at the end of the movie, one of the very last scenes in the movie, before the credit rolls, it tells you that these vehicles are already back. They are already happening again. So if you want to monitor what's going to happen in the world, just watch history because history always repeats itself. Absolutely. In that movie, I don't know, greed, I think, is not the, wasn't the, uh, the pivotal uh, component. It was fraud. So it was the, the fraud, the compounded fraud that happened with the mortgage-backed securities. Uh, greed is, is the foundation of capitalism. Greed is awesome. Greed is what... <laughs> no, okay, I mean... No, it's, well, it's just, I agree with you. It's just, I love the way you said it, though. It, it, no, but everybody looking out for your... Sure. The most um, you know, philanthropic thing that you could do sure. is watch out for your own best interest because yeah, that absolutely. means you're serving a lot of other people. If other people are willing to give you money, that means you're providing a great service to them that they're willing to give you money for. So I, I think greed is what drives... You know, I, I think greed is a great word. I think it's it's a good thing. Yeah, and by the way, just to finish out this question, the 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 um, the charts that I see, because I'm a chartist, I love looking at charts, say that this is the last, to me, it's the last best year to buy to make the most amount of money over the next few years. The next the next year and the year after are going to be still good years, but this one, it's crossing over to be the last best year to buy. You know, in a lot of our seminars, now. we do it, get busy buying. That's oh, one, yeah, of our, absolutely. one of our quotes. Well, I'd absolutely. like to ask you one question about that. Why haven't you shared that chart with me? <laughs> you keeping information for yourself? I, I, mean, I have said this to you four or five times. It's time. Buy. Just buy and buy and buy. You do it anyway. Why would, you, why would you have to tell me to buy? That's why would all you do it anyway? I, do. I, know, I know. What's the name of your book again? <laughs> How to buy houses with none of your own money. Well, no, no. The, the first one. Addicted to real estate. No, the subtitle. The subtitle. You don't remember? No, I, I'm just saying. Why? This is why I don't need to tell you. I don't think you really why I can't stop and why you should start. That's why I don't need to tell you. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop. All right, let's, <laughs> next question, Jeremy. Let's get a, let, let's <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> now, for that note, uh, I'm losing my house to foreclosure. How can you help? It's funny that that followed the other question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's after the crash, right? right. After the crash, that happens. So I, I, you know, I, I hate to, it's a lot of people go go through this for for many reasons, but I would say that um, you know, to help somebody out in foreclosure, the earlier that you respond, the earlier that you take action on stopping the foreclosure, the better, the more options you have. Sure. Um, I, I used to get people that would call me like a week before the foreclosure, and at that point, what can you do? I mean, the only thing you do is march down to the sheriff's office and. You know, stop it from happening with a big pile of cash. Um, but short of that, there's really not a lot of options. So I would say the earlier you 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 are in the process, the more options you have. There's workouts that you can do if you want to stay in the house. Uh, you know, certainly selling the house to an investor like us is a great uh, great option, and and um, we can really make a win win for that. I, I bought a lot of houses where I I bought the house and um, you know let the people stay for a little bit of time. To give them time versus letting the thing go to sheriff sale and having somebody that bought at the sheriff sale kick them out of the sure, house. Sure. So if you're buying at the sheriff sale, all you're helping is the bank. You're not, and, and maybe yourself, but you're not helping a homeowner. Right. It, um, if you're buying it pre foreclosure, which is the best way I think to buy it, is you have the cooperation of the homeowner. You can see inside the house, and you also are helping them get what they want and uh, can have a little bit of compassion for their situation. And stop that process from happening. And actually, if you're a real estate investor, and like us, and you know what we do, everything's a win-win situation. You know, we can help somebody. I mean, I, you know, we, I was talking about a deal I did this weekend where you know it's an upside-down deal, and I'm just trying to help the person. The person's being deployed. He's, he's a soldier. He just got married. He's got this investment property. He's got to get rid of it, and he's underwater. And I came up with a solution for him that will probably work. And he'll get out. And it's the same thing with the foreclosures. People who are in foreclosure, it has to be a win-win for everybody. I mean, I, I, you know, so one of the things you could do to stop a foreclosure is get an agreement of sale going. So if it's under an agreement of sale, the bank will slow down. That doesn't mean they're not going to foreclose, but they're going to slow down. Well, if the other you, thing is just answering the um, answering the foreclosure. There's a lot of people that just bury their head in the sand and they don't right. do anything about it. You know, maybe you should hire an attorney right away and have them file – Paperwork at the courthouse to counteract the foreclosure process to draw it out and at least, you know, give some objections to it and, and, and uh, answer their complaint and whatnot. But, you know, the other thing that we oftentimes do is we'll reinstate the mortgage and uh, the benefit to them is that it stops the foreclosure from happening. Now, we're, this is in a situation where we're buying the property that we will um, 
we'll buy the property subject to their mortgage. And we talked about in the show before where we can take over the mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. The benefit to them is it avoids the foreclosure process. The benefit to us is we are often taking over uh, loans with interest rates that are much lower than we would get as investors. And I've done this for, for, geez, years, 10 years now, 12 12 years now, where I I actually get – if I take over somebody's loan, it actually helps improve their credit because I'm making the payments and uh, they're getting the positive – uh, yeah. reporting on their credit report to the yeah. point where I actually get credit card offers in my office from sellers who sold me their house. So I know that their credit's getting better because they, they're sending me these awesome. uh, credit card offers. I get them all the time. It's pretty awesome. So um, so that's one way. I mean, we, if it's something that if, – if you want uh, us to give you a couple different options, we can always do that. Just give us a call, 267-988-2000. And most likely we can help you out. And if we can't help you out directly, we, we surely can point you in the right direction. Give you some good right, advice. So uh, let's get on to the last question before we run out of time. I want to sell my house, and the realtor said I should redo my kitchen first. What would you guys do? Oh, boy, I get this question so many times. What do you say? I, I tell them absolutely do not redo the kitchen. It's too late. You know, you, you, if you're redoing a kitchen – and you're going to spend whatever, $10,000 on the kitchen, you're not getting the $10,000 back. You're probably getting, if you're lucky, you're getting, you're getting 5000 of it back. But if you, if, you live in, if you plan to live in the house for a couple of years and you're going to enjoy the kitchen, that's when you redo the kitchen. See, I do the opposite. When I, the houses that I've lived in, I renovate the kitchen right before I move out. And then my wife gets all mad because she goes, wait a second. <laughs> now it's all nice. Right. Now you want to move? No, but I, I think if you can get kitchens at, at wholesale prices uh, as an inv- as a owner occupant, if you're just getting them from, you know, the, the guy that advertises in the uh, magazines and, and yellow pages and stuff, you're probably not getting a very good deal, and you might not get your money out. But if you know the right places to buy kitchens, you could, you know. Well, well assuming you, you could. I'm sorry. I, I do something different than both of you guys, and I'm really surprised that you guys haven't thought of this. What I tell people is, there's no way I can properly, you know calculate if your kitchen should be redone until you've had me over for dinner. I need to be there to see how the stove works, <laughs> see how the fridge works, see if the ice maker works on the door. I need to enjoy a dining experience there first. That's funny. That's great. <laughs> you know, sometimes when people just, um, if they want to sell their house as is, obviously, you know, you could sell it to us, sell it to an investor. Absolutely. And that yeah. way you don't have yeah. to worry about it. I mean, one of the Reasons people come to our office is because they don't want to deal with renovations, picky picky buyers and whatnot. So. Okay, well, that was um, some great questions. You guys better stick around because we're going to be uh, meeting with Tom Robinson of Robinson Insurance, and we're going to talk about some of the issues that arise that real estate investors are going to want to know about. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last-minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. 
As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 76 Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. All right, everybody, welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. This is Jeremy Ricci, and I want to welcome our special guest, Tom Robinson of Robinson Insurance. And we're going to talk a little bit about property insurance for investors and some of the peculiarities of that. So welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Jeremy. So what can you tell us about, you know, number one, uh, about flipper insurance? Let's talk about that first compared to landlord insurance. So if there's people that are out there fixing and flipping houses, what do they need to know? What kind of insurance do they need? Basically, it depends on the type of flip they're doing. Um, if there's, if you're talking about just a cosmetic flip, there's insurance for that. If you're talking about a major renovation, adding on stories, uh, uh, the house, square footage, stuff like that, then there's builder's risk policies that a little more involved, basically. What would they call? So builder's risk is the one where you're doing major renovations. Yeah. And what's what do they call the um, other type? Pretty much just a vacant uh, – it's a vacant insurance policy, basically, because the property okay. is vacant at the time. So you want to make sure it's covered properly. And if you're in the business of fixing and flipping houses, you probably should have some sort of a general liability policy as well, like just to cover it, the business for – If you're not if you're not doing the actual work, absolutely. Okay. So if you're doing the work, you know, obviously there's risk of people getting hurt on the job site. There's all sorts of things. Is that – Different, different kind of insurance. Different for that? kind of insurance. Different kind of insurance for that for that uh, type of risk. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm curious, Tom. So, yeah. so what happens is, you, you know, so somebody buys a house. I mean, mm-hmm. most people listening to our show have probably bought a house that they live in, so they have to get insurance typically because the mortgage company is making them get insurance, and they're also going to live there. So that's a what kind of policy is that? If they're going to live in the house, that would be uh, a, a form of homeowners insurance, depending on the type of policy that they would. Uh, would like to have most po- most people should have what's called an HO three policy. Okay, it's a more comprehensive coverage. Um, so what does that cover? That covers if the place burns down, for uh, example. F- uh, basically, fire, theft, liability, vandalism, wind and water damage, the covered water damage, and that's the main four to five claims that happen have something to do with water damage. So you always want to make sure you have some sort of water damage coverage okay. on an owner occupied. Or a tenant occupied. It's a little more difficult to get the water damage um, with some of the carriers on the um, the vacants um, and the builder's risk. But so then I then I become a landlord and I have a policy. Is it, what kind of policy is that for a landlord to have to rent to someone? Well, um, that would be a uh, what's called a dwelling policy. Is what you would have okay. that would cover you for the structure of the house. Um, incidental con- uh, contents if you have like a refrigerator washer and dryer that might be the yours and not the tenants. Um, but the tenants would be responsible for their own uh, contents. Um, but you would basically be fi- – it would, it would basically be a homeowner's policy um, without the theft coverage because okay. you, you can't really steal the house. So one of the things I always worry about is my tenants, my own tenant, mm-hmm. slipping and falling inside the property I'm renting to them. Mm-hmm. What – Covers them. Do I, do I have a liability on on my policy, or is it their tenant policy? No, no. It's it's 
it's your pol- you, your policy should have liability on it. Uh, you should also have the tenants ha- have their own insurance policy, which is called a uh, renter's policy. And the reason for that is because that policy also has um, liability on it to where if they did something um, that caused someone to get hurt that you were not negligent about, um, it's basically it's an extra layer of liability between you and a lawsuit. And it also shows, you know, good. Uh, it, it's a good tenant that's going to take the time to spend the $150 to get a renter's insurance policy for sure. themselves. Yeah. Plus it's an extra, uh, like I said, it's an extra layer of liability that keeps you out of a lawsuit. Uh, biggest, easiest example is somebody had a, um, uh, somebody would have like a party at the house. Somebody drank too much and somebody fell. Well, you as the owner of the property, uh, where's your negligence? You're, there's no negligence there on you. Um, but if the tenant didn't have liability insurance on them for themselves, uh, you're still going to be named in it. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's a, like I said, just an extra layer between the two. So, so you were then asked to to be named as an additional insured right. on their policy, so that that way um, you know if they cancel it or not, things like that. Uh, Yes, the, the short answer to that is you can be um, added on to that. In fact, we have a bunch of um, 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 oh, what are they? I lost my train of thought. Sorry. So like, yeah. things yeah. like uh, additional insured or additional interest mm-hmm. would be would would be in this a- case. A- right? Absolutely. A lot of management. I was getting, a lot of management companies who are managing real estate for people. That's the new thing. They want to be added on as additional insured for liability. Right, well, that's kind of where I, I'm going with this question is, what if we did this? I mean, if it only costs 150 bucks for a renter's policy, I can tell you from my experience of renting to hundreds and hundreds of people for, for 27 years, nobody ever gets it. So if it's only 150 bucks, what if we took 75 bucks out of their initial deposit that they give us and kicked in half, okay, to get them to, na- to a get a policy? Idea. And we did that as a standard thing every time. So it only costs them an extra $75 to insure all of their stuff. Then is that something we could work out with you? You could absolutely work out. But if you're, you're basically, it sounds like you're going halfway. I mean, if it's $150, 15 bucks a month, it's just easier to put it in the lease that they have to maintain it. Do you have other and, landlords that do that? Um, they're, st- they're coming up. I have a couple that. We'll do that absolutely. What if what if you just require them to and, get just get it and to show you proof that they got it? And if they don't, then you take it out of the security deposit and go buy it for them. Because it makes it more difficult for you to close the deal. As a salesman, you're a landlord. You got somebody in front of you. You want to close the deal. You don't want to force them to get insurance. But it, it, this way, it's almost like you're doing them a favor. Say, look, it's only seventy five bucks. You put up seventy five. I'll put up seventy five. Write an extra seventy five in a check. You're about to cut me. No, well, I was like, I like the idea of putting it in, in the lease. You know, it's an extra twenty bucks. A month, and we we will buy your homeowner's insurance for you, your renter's insurance. No, so yeah, right. Your renter's insurance for you, and it'll cover your it'll cover your goods. It'll cover so everything. You mean you just pad the rent? Yeah, to, pad to the cover rent. the cost, and we sure. pay for the policy. It's, yeah. not, it's actually a really good idea. It's, instead of going half halfway, and then you're still doing the extra work on back and forth trying to get the other. Well, half. At least you know it's with a good company too. That if it, right. they're not just getting it right. But, but now here's the other. And thing. You know it's renewed because you're renewing it. Right. Well, here's the other thing. If you're if if uh, I've gone to the tenants and said, look, you, you, sometimes these companies offer you like a multi-policy discount. Is that true? True. So, so if you say, well, go to the, go to your car insurance company and ask them about adding the renter's policy. A hundred percent. If, yeah. uh, if, if they sit there and they have a couple cars, the discount on their car insurance will probably pay for their renter's insurance. Yeah. So that, then it's like getting it for free. Yeah. Well, how yeah. much is a renter's policy on average? Uh, $150. Yeah. So on a good average. So, yeah. So then, so if you yeah, get, I actually like the idea of adding it yeah. to the policy. So if you got a duplex and, and, we, and we got both floors with their own renter's insurance policy, then the owner's policy might have a nice discount. No. <laughs> no. I you see the what? angle you're trying to make. Nice try. Nice try. Nice try. But no. 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 Hey, I'm just working it, man. Get, get that. Get, get that one through the insurance department. Try it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, there's something that a lot of landlords run into, and what about these? Uh, some of the insurance companies not allowing they have this like vicious dogs uh, or vicious breeds uh, thing. Have you seen a lot of that? Some a lot, some do, some don't. Some do, some don't. Some uh, have it's um, yeah, yeah. There's the there's the dog list that that they have. Some companies uh, do not want you to have those type of dogs, and it's some of them will allow you as long as there's no bite history um, with the dog. 
Um, how, do you, how, do you research, yeah. how do you research a bite history? <laughs> I, there, there must be something. I, I have, that's, the National I have, Registry. There must be something where, where, there, where there is a – well, you asked – you're asking the question. Yeah. So and they're signing that the dog has no bite history. Got it. So in other words, okay. if there's another gotcha. if there's another dog bite, it's technically you're fraudulent on the application. So you gotta look for the dogs that had a well, te- teardrop tattooed next to their eye, right? I've never <laughs> been bitten by a dog. However, recently a dog did make me feel uncomfortable. Can I sue? You can anybody can sue anybody for anything. Um but uh but no, but the uh the, the reason behind the, the dog list is and, and I talk to people every day uh, who have very nice pit bulls and Dobermans and shepherds and whatever else is on the list. Um, but the problem is, uh, in, basically, in the courts, if if you have a uh, poodle that bites someone or you have a pit bull that bites someone and does the same damage, the amount that the insurance companies are paying are much greater. Mm-hmm. Just from, just from on, repu- the pit, on the pit bulls. Just from reputation. Now, my tenant, none of my tenants have pit bulls. They all have American Staffordshire Terriers. Absolutely. And then, and then I'm like, come on, that's a pit bull. Yeah, stop, they, stop yeah, trying to yeah, sneak yeah, it by. Funny. They, 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 <laughs> yep, they, they always they they play always that do. game. Yeah. yeah, but with also with uh, um, a lot of pro- uh, properties, if you're buying a property that you're going to hold and rent, uh, if it has a pool. A lot of companies will not put right. a dwelling policy yeah. on a property. Probably with got a pool. kids falling in the pools and things like well, that. Well, it's just yeah. an extra liability, and it's, they just don't—they sure. just don't add it. Trampolines are the same kind of thing. You got to be careful with trampolines and stuff like that. So, so all three of us buy properties in trusts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, none of the properties are in our name. How does that affect our policies? Um, that you would have to talk to the lawyer about, basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I have a lot of people who are buying uh, LLCs, uh, right. you know, but basically um, anybody can – doesn't doesn't insurance, stop somebody Insurance from is your first, in. first line of defense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. It, just, it just slows well, things down. I wasn't trying to say – I was trying to say how does it affect the – Price of the policy? Not at all. Okay. Not that, at all. That's what I meant. I, I know what you're, where you're they going. St- right. They still asked who uh, the the principal is of the trust uh, because they still – that's how they can find uh, claims. Uh, and a lot of uh, – most of the insurance companies all use uh, insurance scoring now. Mm-hmm. So temp- somebody who has um, good to excellent credit, it's not the same, but good to excellent insurance scoring can actually sometimes pay – Half as much as someone wow. who doesn't. So it's, wow. yeah. Do we have to? We have to be concerned when we're buying a property if the property itself has had claims. Uh, isn't there like a database that the insurance guys look into? Yeah, it's what? called. Yeah, it's called A plus. Um, is what it usually is, uh, or Choice Point. And basically, most of the insurance companies, um, the, the claim follows the buyer. Okay, so if there's the a homeowner. claim. So the homeowner is the one that's filed the, the person claim. Person purchasing the house. Buyer, the okay. person who sold the house. Um, even though there was a claim at that house, um, it doesn't affect the okay. buyer. A couple companies it does um, as a as an agent. So in other words, I see somebody that house had four claims in five years. I'd be a little leery and have to really make sure that they had a really good home inspection. It was it the person that correct filed the files more claims than they should correct or right. finding things that would be wrong. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what. I'd bet you anything that Macaroni's house is one of those houses. <laughs> Is, does he even own a house? <laughs> you don't own a house yet? He, we, we'd be Not yet, so live at home, you know, good old home. Yeah, you should buy a rental property. Yeah. You don't need to own the one you live in, but you should buy a rental property. I'll go to you guys, of course. Okay. We'd be afraid to rent him a property because he might be cooking macaroni and put the house on fire. Only if it's Larry's house. If it's under Larry's name, then yes. That's okay. It won't be under my name. It'll be in a trust, and it'll be insured by Tom, so it doesn't matter. So whoa, whoa, if you want to burn it down, that's okay. I, I wouldn't do that, that to Tom. Don't, no, that, don't that, say that, that in front of your insurance that. agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Jeez. Please. So the other real question, you know, catastrophic insurance, uh, you know, again, how does that work for us as real estate investors? Should we have a catastrophic policy? What is catastrophic? Yeah, m- well, most, most, most. Umbrella is what I mean, right? Well, umbrella, umbrella yeah. yeah, yeah. Liability, you know, basically in, insurance companies, not insurance companies, but people who sue are, are going for the limit. I mean, if somebody something catastrophic mm-hmm. happens, how much liability is enough liability? Basically, is what it comes down to. So they they look at the limit. They're not going. Yeah, they usually, don't go over and above that. They go for yeah. the low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah, that's all they they're going because they get the cash from the uh, from the insurance company. It's just easier that way. Okay, that's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, I also wondered how that works with with trust. How do we get liability insurance? How do we get catastrophic liability insurance 
on, on our trust. Wouldn't you insure it yourself? I, I don't know. I don't either. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> I mean, the trust can't do anything negligent. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. That's right. true. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we, still, we should get yeah. it separately. Yeah, absolutely. So it, just, Anything else that, that landlords or real estate investors uh, need to know about as far as, um, you know, any, any things that you see that they all, they do wrong? or. Uh, no, just in, in, insure it correctly. I've come across um, quite a few times over doing this now for 30 years where basically um, I give someone a quote, and it is a vacant risk. They call me back and tell me their agent, and won't mention any companies, oh, they can do it for this. Well, when we look at it, the policy, they write a regular dwelling policy on it, and um, mm-hmm. the, 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 once they write the dwelling policy on it, once a pro- property is vacant for 30 days, it loses its vacancy. Yeah. So, therefore, it was not a very good uh, policy. Okay. Well, it was a great talk. Uh, you're going to stick around with us for the last segment? Wouldn't miss it. Okay. So, I mean, in summary, there's three things that are really dangerous. Pit bulls, Dobermans, and macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, stick around as we discuss how to learn about real estate investing without paying $35,000 for a course. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addictedtorealestate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. Hi, I'm Larry Steinus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Wow, that was a great segment. I was really excited to talk about insurance. Um, I, I, I realize it sounds sarcastic, but actually, insurance is a really good. It's a really good topic, and especially for investors. Yeah, very necessary. Yeah, yeah especially if macaroni's over your house. <laughs> so, so, uh, so you know, so we're here to talk about how to in, learn how to invest in real estate without spending thirty five thousand dollars. And I hear a lot of people spending a lot of money on a lot of programs. We only charge thirty four thousand, so well, that's good. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I would say that we put out more free information than any real estate investors on the planet. Okay, on the whole planet. That's right. I mean, we really share with people what it is that we do, just like we're doing right now, telling you about what we do. 
And what's it costing you? Nothing. You're driving down the street. You're listening to this radio show. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, the easiest way is to put your name and email address in at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, addictedtorealestate.com. And I will personally send you out invitations to our local meetings. And our next biggest meeting coming up is May 21st. It's a Saturday. And we're going to have like three different times on it. And uh, we're going to be ho- holding that in uh, just outside of Northeast Philadelphia. So if you just put your name and email address in, I will personally send you an invitation to it. Make sure you go to the website and do it. Yeah, that's a free meeting, but we also have our once a month meetings that are twenty dollars. So big investment there, right? Yeah, we really we really rob people. Yeah. I'll tell you, twenty bucks. Yeah, and I got to tell you, you know, so, you know, the audience doesn't know that I was originally a student of these guys. Not only am I, <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> I was originally a student of Jeremy and Phil, and 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 the reality is, I spent twenty dollars on a meeting that Jeremy was hosting, and Jeremy talked about subject two. And I learned subject two, and I was blown away by this. I thought, and I, I've been a real estate investor since I was 18 years old, never heard of subject two. Wait, do you, wait, do you hear subject three? <laughs> HTO, <laughs> not DWL. Stop it. <laughs> That's an inside joke in our office. People write subject two and the number two, and we've right. actually had people send us emails with the topic subject two, TWO, and I thought it was absolutely hysterical. But anyway, I'm sorry. So I learned from these guys subject two, and within three weeks, I did my first subject two deal. And, I, and and it was an amazing deal. With and by 40, subject two, you, you you took over somebody else's mortgage right, payment. Just so mortgage payment, right, anybody exactly. that hasn't listened to the show and heard that term before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Took over the mortgage payments and took over the equity in the property, which was about forty thousand dollars, and had a four hundred dollars a month positive cash flow. It was an amazing deal. And all the objections that that you know Jeremy had talked about, I had answers to them because he had he had taught me this. And that was twenty bucks. And I would bet that if you go to a you know one of these big 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 seminars, you're not learning that information until you spend the thirty five thousand, assuming you get there. Let me know? just ask you a couple of questions about this. So you came to a meeting, you paid twenty bucks. Oh, you got, gonna, you he, got, here we go. I'm going to be in trouble now, guys. How, I wonder how he's going to charge me for this. You came to a meeting, you paid twenty bucks, you got forty thousand dollars plus cash flow. Is that right? right? That's right. Absolutely. Right. And it was easy to do. It was very easy to do. Anybody could do it. Anybody can do it. Even, Even macaroni. macaroni. <laughs> What's the return on investment, huh? <laughs> you don't need a calculator to figure out that's good. Enough. Okay, all right. I just wanted to clarify that. And it was seventeen hundred dollars and twenty seventeen hundred and twenty five dollars out of my pocket to buy that deal. Nice. Which blows my mind. I mean, still yeah. to this day, it's my absolute yeah. favorite and, subject and, to deal. And, and we say, you know, Larry, you could have done it better. Let's figure out a way to do it with well, yeah, none of your money out of your pocket, it's funny. which is which yeah. is. Probably right. what we had talked about earlier today was maybe you should do a rent to own on that rent to own. No, get, this get is a different one. Buyer. The one I was talking about this morning was a different one. When I saw this 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 weekend. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm just saying, if you put money out of pocket, you have to think of a good way to recoup that money, Absolutely. and you sell it on a, a lease op- a lease yeah. option, a rent to own, and you get that money back right away. Yeah, and as, and you know, I don't know if, if anybody listening has actually gone to some of these seminars. You know, they're basically a three step seminar. First one is the free one. And everybody can go to them, and then they sell you the the pitch for the next one, which is which is typically a three day seminar. So the first one's a three hour seminar, the next one's a three day seminar, and at the three day seminar, all they're doing is selling you On the thirty five thousand yeah right the thirty five thousand dollar program twelve thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand yeah right. it's, it's a lot of people come to our meetings and talk about going to these different ones, and they're and they're embarrassed to actually even name the number that they paid. I know. Yeah, yeah it's and it's a, it's a shame because these people aren't getting what they're paying for. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard it where people say, I wish that I met you guys before I did that. And, you know, we don't want you to come after that you did it. We want you to come before you go writing them a giant check because you don't need a giant check to work with us. There's lots of different ways that we can help each other and make money off of each other's deals. For example, you find an amazing deal, but you can't – maybe you can't fund it right now with the current situation in your life. If it's a if it's an amazing deal, guess who will fund it? We will. Exactly. We, we can be partners. We can be partners, and we can all make money. Yeah, you might make only half of the money, but you're going to make money, and you're going to learn while you do these deals to ultimately get to a point where you'll have your own money, and you won't even need us. And then maybe we'll borrow money off of you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, right. So, at some of these places, the first thing they do is they say we have lenders with 
Forty million dollars ready to go to buy your deals. Well, you want to know the truth? We have lenders with forty million dollars ready to go to buy their deals. Any deal you come to us, it's a good deal. Believe me, we're going to find the money for it, and it's and it's going to work out. It's it, it's the same as what they're teaching you. <laughs> it was sad, but last week I actually had one of our private investors call us on a, a property that we were looking to buy that he he sold. We were doing, it was a big big deal. It would have been a game changer for us. It was eighteen million dollars is what we were looking to buy this place for, and it was. Uh, substantial piece of property and he ended up selling it for 21 million cash and we were upset by that but at the same time the reason he was calling me was that he said i got some money i need to put the work on the street so you're talking about (laughs) there's there's half of what you just said right there yeah and if these guys would have bought that property, you would have heard at uh, Thursday at 3 o'clock, hi, this is Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Yeah. I have no co-hosts. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're down in Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was prepared to move upon receiving the phone call. But not only did they pay $3 million more than the place was probably worth, but they paid in cash. So Yeah, you, yeah we were looking to do a owner financing deal on that. Yeah. yeah, so we were a little upset to hear that news. Right. But. Well, back to the topic about, you know, how to learn about real estate investing without paying $35,000 for a course. You've already found it. You just don't know it. It's addicted to real estate. Uh, we're planning a local meeting. Okay, di- uh, we, we are having this meeting on May 21st, which is a big meeting. We're going to be announcing that real soon. But we also have another one. It's either going to be on May 11th or May 12th. If you're from northeast Philadelphia – uh, I believe it's going to be at Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. I'm just waiting for the <laughs> the major decision to let me know if the calendar is booked or not at Maggie's. I've only been waiting <laughs> since Wednesday, okay, since Wednesday to tell me if the room is available. Maggie, are you listening? Patty? <laughs> Patty from Maggie's? Maggie. Are you listening? Please look at the calendar. Send me a freaking email so I can let people know whether this meeting is going to happen or not. Phil doesn't <laughs> mind calling people out on the radio, whether it's no. Gus no, or Patty. Right, 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 I'm right. warning you, Patty. If no I don't pressure. hear from you today, I'm sending macaroni down to get you. All right? I'm warning you. You don't want this guy showing up. <laughs> the trouble this guy can cause in your life is not something you deserve, really. And don't give him access to the sound system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do we got? We got about three and a half minutes here. Let me tell you what we're going to teach you, all right? My new book, which I can now talk about because it's almost ready for sale, is called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money, right? That's something that you want to learn. Whether you believe it or not, you're going to believe it after you read this book because I'm going to give you countless example after example about how we do this. You know, these big national companies that come around – they're pretty much promising to teach you the same thing, but at a cost of about $35,000. And you don't need to spend that kind of money. My book is for sale for 1995, significantly below the $35,000. I thought it was 20 money. bucks, but hey, you, you knocked off five cents. Huh? I knocked off five cents. If you listen to the radio show, I pay you five cents extra. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And it's not complicated, it's simple. It sounds complicated, but once you learn how to do it, I mean, anyone can do it. Even Macaroni can do it, all right? Even though he hasn't yet, I think he can, all right? And, you know, you don't need to spend that kind of money. I mean, if you bought every single product that we have available, you'd probably spend about uh, $2,500 tops, right? And, And one of the reasons we do that is because when people buy our products, they sort of become part of our family. They're typically not people that we don't know. They're people that we do know. How do we know them? We know them because they come to our real estate meetings, okay? They keep coming to our real estate meetings. We have a relationship with them. Some of them get their real estate license and hang their license at one of our three offices in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, or Huntington Valley. And what happens next, okay? They do real estate deals. They run them through our office. We, we make a little commission off of that, okay? That's, that's how the business works. And we might partner with them so we all make money we just did a deal recently with zach who's one of our apprentices he knocked on our door like two years ago and asked us if he would work for us for free would we teach him this business and him and i and jeremy we each made a fifteen thousand dollar check uh i went to the house once jeremy facilitated a lot of the deal and, and and zach is the one who brought it to us so we partner with people to get deals done. We don't need to take $35,000 from you to make money off of you. We want to do deals with you. If you're a person who's out there beating the street, knocking on doors, and you want to ask people if you can buy their house, when you find a great deal, 
bring it to us, and we'll help you close it out. We'll put up the money. We'll give you the brain power. We'll give you the contracts. We'll make it happen, and that's what you need. I just got good news from Zach. Just as you were saying that, Zach emailed me saying that one of the properties we're doing a short sale on Came back at a lower number. They did the appraisal, so oh, we can great. actually that's now hysterical. buy it for 152 instead of 166. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's great. So no, that's great. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And, and, 152. And while those guys are yeah, celebrating the good news, yeah. I'm going to remind everybody that if you become a real estate agent with our office, you get free training. We give you obviously training on real estate, uh, you know, uh, on how to sell real estate as a real estate agent. But we also give you training on how to buy real estate. We're actually uh, Phil and Jeremy once a month minimum are teaching the agents, and they actually teach them separately. So that's actually two sessions once every month minimum that they'll come in and talk to you guys about how to buy real estate as a real estate investor. And we also give you free signs, whether you're one of our agents or you're a borough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. We just had a local we, borough. We, we only have two minutes left this show. We can't tell that story. We remind, we remind us next, to tell next that story show next show time. Right? We, we also the, pay for your real, real estate, estate school. school. Exactly. So if you have to go to school to get your real estate license, we'll pay for it. How about that? Subject to certain restrictions. You have to hang your license with us. Yeah, which is funny. People still ask me that question. Like, you're serious? You didn't figure that out by yourself? Yeah, what's the catch? But real quick, if you want to get your real estate license and you want us to pay for your school, give me a call, 215-378-9190, and I will pay for your real estate school, and you'll get to join these guys and learn. You'll be addicted to real estate. Okay, guys. So if you want to become a sponsor or be a guest on our show... Just give us a call, 267-988-2000. If you're in a business that's real estate related and uh, and you think that our listeners can benefit from what products you have to offer, give me a call, 267-988-2000. If you want to reach the Philadelphia, New Jersey, gigantic market, you got to give me a call, people. I'm Phil Falcone, and don't forget to go to addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address in. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to bother you. I'm only going to help you and educate you. Addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. Thank you all for listening today. Every Thursday, you can listen to Addicted to Real Estate radio show at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. So WWDB, Thursdays at 3, 860 a.m. is the channel. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody. Thank Tom once again for coming out and teaching us a little bit about insurance. You know, it's something that uh, nobody's excited to have, but everybody needs. Absolutely. Thanks again. Bye, everybody. Yeah, you know that's all right.